to the Louis file. We're going to um, start in Galatians 6 today. So get your Bibles. I'll wait right here. <laughs> you know, in Galatians 6, it starts off, it says, Brethren, if, even if anyone is caught in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, each one looking to yourself so that you too will not be tempted. Wow, there you go. So I like that because it says if anyone is caught in a trespass, you know, if you, it's so it's not something that you go looking for. We don't look for a trouble to get into as a Christian. We we sometimes stumble into. Sometimes we uh, find ourselves led astray. Sometimes we're deceived. Sometimes we're caught up in something. It's not our nature to trespass it's not what we generally do as a believer but that doesn't mean we can't get caught up in something so he's telling us here that we need to restore that person but we need to do it gentle in gentleness i mean you who are spiritual so someone that is walking after the spirit you have to go and gently restore that person i mean this is some great uh, advice and but it, but it says watch yourself so that you too won't be tempted so the idea here is is a uh, fleshly, carnally-minded Christian doesn't need to engage in trying to pull another person out of a trespass. I mean, lots of times it happens where someone gets hurt, offended, or gets caught up in something, and uh, <clears throat> they will gather around them other people with the same offense, or maybe with the same bad habits, or maybe a pet sin even, and so they just feed on each other and they're like well they don't understand if they understood they wouldn't say this or I, I don't believe I can't believe that's happening to you so basically they just feed the problem instead of uh, pull the person out of it um, now whereas a spiritually minded person they would go into the situation knowing full well that they are capable of doing the very same thing and they do it gently and they keep Keep, they watch out for themselves because they know this. They don't come in there prideful. They don't come in there trying to make the person feel okay or condemn them. They come in there with the truth and with love and uh, gently bring the person back around. <clears throat> I've had this experience with uh, seeing as how I was involved in drugs and alcohol for a big portion of my life. I've had this experience with a couple of people that have fallen back, as the world might say, fallen off the wagon. Uh, people I know are believers. I don't have any doubt God has moved into their life and he's done a significant work in them. Uh, but something difficult happened, a lost job, a trouble with a marriage, a, a rebellious child, uh, any number of things. And the next thing you know, they end up going back to uh, seek relief from drugs or alcohol and only to find out in a few days or weeks that uh, it doesn't work and they hate themselves for it and they and they feel condemned for it so i've had more than one phone call that i've had to go and uh, talk with people in that situation and i go in there knowing full well that if it wasn't for the grace of god and his keeping i too could easily slip into that same thing i mean what what's preventing me if it isn't the holy spirit so I go and I speak with them, and I try. And my main thing is, is is trying to remind these people who they are in Christ. It's not about pointing at them and telling them that they shouldn't have done this or they should have done that. It's it's about uh, restoring them, getting them to see that uh, God still loves them. He still got a plan. You didn't do anything that caught him by surprise. He's still in charge. He wants you to come back. Uh, get your head together, get a good night's sleep, and go at it again tomorrow, and uh, just keep moving forward. In verse 2, Galatians 6, 2, it says, Bear one another's burdens, and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But each one must examine his own work, and then he will have reason for boasting in regard to himself alone, and not to, in regard to another. For each one will bear his own load. So we bear one another's burdens, and that is fulfilling the law of Christ. I think that's great, because we tend to think of law and grace. We think of law versus Christ, which you know is sort of what's been going on in this letter, is that Paul was saying, don't go to the law, stick to Christ. But now he's telling them that there is a law of Christ, which he defines as bearing one another's burdens. I love this, because 
What I think he's saying is, it's not a written down, thou shalt bear one another's burdens, but what it is is the law of Christ. Law uh, sometimes is defined as the way a thing works. And the way Christ works is he bears other burdens. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so good. That's what he does. That's his personality. That's his nature. So when we're joined to him and we are one of those that are spiritual and we're going to help restore a brother and we're, what we're doing is we're bearing his burdens or her burdens with us. We're, we're joining ourselves in with their struggle. See, and then we're going to help pull them out of this, right? We're going, to, we're going to be part of pulling them out of the trespass, not pushing them in, not accusing or pointing fingers or judging, but just saying, come on, I'm in this with you, and we're going to walk out of this thing. So he's telling us to bear each other's burdens, and he says, if anyone thinks he's something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. He is nothing. See, that's what we are. We're nothing. Without Christ, apart from Christ, we can do nothing. <laughs> but each one must examine his own work, and then you'll have reason to boast and regard himself alone and not with each other. So for each one must bear it will bear his own load. So up here in cha chapter verse 2, he says we should bear one another's burdens, and then he says each one will bear his own load. I think this, this is both. I think that we have to be responsible for ourselves, but at the same time, we are, in a sense, our brother's keeper, and vice versa. Others should bear their own load and be responsible, and then when, uh, but if they find themselves in trouble, then we're there, right? That's, I mean, that's a community, that's a family, that's, that's love. So then he moves on into uh, another familiar thing. Uh, m we tend to think of this as money, but I think it, it fits a lot more than just money, but Okay, so Galatians 6, 6, the one who is taught the word is to share all good things with the one who teaches him. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked, for whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. So then, while we have opportunity, let us do good to the all people, and especially to those who are of the household of the faith. There you go. So basically, if you're being taught uh, the word, then you ought to take care of the person that's sharing the word with you. Um, that's interesting because Paul uses this in uh, other letters, in the Corinthian letter, I think it is, and he's basically saying, if I've taken care of your spiritual needs, then what, it's not too much for me to ask that you take care of some of my physical needs, is it? And he said, even in the law, God says, don't muzzle the ox when he's treading out the grain. So if you work for uh, the Lord, then sometimes maybe people need to take care of you. Now, this I'm not saying this to uh, ask for anything. I'm not asking for anything. In fact, that's what Paul said in that same letter. He says, I, I've never taken anything from you for myself. I always work with my own hands so that no one can rob me of this boast. And his point is, is I'm, not, I'm not taking anything for what the Lord has given me. I, I, all I do is I receive it from Him, so therefore I freely, I freely receive, so that I freely give. And that's, that's what I would like to continue doing myself. So don't, don't misunderstand here. But the point is, is that from God's perspective, it wouldn't be wrong that a preacher or teacher of the Word would be compensated. And He says, don't be mocked. I mean, whatever you sow is what you get back, right? So if you sow to a flesh realm, then you're going to get back flesh realm stuff. But if you sow to the spirit, you're going to get back spirit stuff. And, and then he encourages us not to lose heart uh, because in due time we're going to, we are going to reap. Don't, don't get wore out waiting on the good return. Um, we just keep sowing seed, sowing seed, sowing seed. Whether it's money, whether it's the word, whether it's uh, encouragement, whether it's hospitality, I mean, it, whatever it is, you just keep pouring it out, and in due time, there will be a reaping. Uh, but if you don't even see it, it doesn't even matter because you're just doing what Jesus would do because He's in you, and what He does is bear the burden of others, and He pours His life out for the sake of others. So, I mean, that's what we do, even if we don't seem to get any return. And then He says, So then, 
while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. And then he says, especially to those who are of the household of the faith. Now, why would he specify that? I think there might be more than one reason, but I think the main reason is, is because the household of faith is pushing eternal life. So everybody that's in the household of faith, the church, the body of Christ, has got the same goal and it's working for the kingdom. So it would only make sense that you would keep the kingdom people built up and served and taken care of because we're all fighting for the same thing. So, all right, well, there's only a few verses left in Galatians, but I think I'm going to wait and make one more uh, brief video to finish up our study in Galatians. I don't know. Uh, if you've caught all these videos or not, I hope that you have. If not, go back and find them. Uh, uh, these studies in Galatians, I have really enjoyed it. And uh, we'll finish up Galatians next time. Thanks a lot. I'll see you later.